The word doubt defined in the Greek dictionary, which was the original language this was taught in, means to be without a way, which we're never without a way because Jesus is the way. So when you hear that phrase, no way, there's just no way. There's no way this is gonna work. That's a good time to open your mouth and say Jesus is the way. So there is a way. I may not know what it is, but he does. To be without resources. And this next part of this definition, to be honest, I had to think this one over for a while. I actually had to finally pray and just say, God, what, what's with that? Part of, the, part of the definition of the word to doubt means to be embarrassed. And you know what I think that refers to? I think that some of the reason why we waver back and forth and we, we think, well, yeah, this, I, I'm gonna do this. Well, no, I'm not gonna do this. Well, yeah, I'm gonna do this. Well, no, I'm not gonna do this. I think that there's a part of us that's very concerned that if we're wrong and God doesn't come through, that we're gonna be embarrassed when we have to face up to other people that it didn't happen in our life. And I don't think we have to be like that. To be in doubt, to be perplexed, to be at a loss, Doubt also means to stand in two ways or to have everything just all up in the air. And when you've got a relationship with God, things are not ever or always just up in the air. Now, let's talk about self-doubt. First of all, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.12, one of my favorite scriptures, that because of our faith in Jesus, we now can dare, everybody say dare, that, that word is used a lot. It's used in Ephesians 3.20. That God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever dare to hope, ask, or think. And God doesn't want you to have little faith. He wants you to have big faith. And he wants you to ask him for and believe for things that your mind cannot get in agreement with. Come on. I mean, I, one, one day I was praying many years ago and I felt like I was supposed to pray this prayer that sounded really stupid to me. But I, I was gonna be daring. And so I prayed, God, I pray that the time will come when you will let me help every person on the planet. Now, you know, the very next thing I heard from the devil was, oh, who do you think you are? See, if you really step out in faith and you get daring and bold in your faith, the enemy is going to right away tell you, who do you think that you are? And then he's going to start reminding you of everything that you do wrong. Well, you know what? I, I'm, I don't think we've got the whole planet yet, but we're making good progress. Amen. And, you know, I would rather believe for a lot and get some of it than believe for a little and get all of it. So why not go ahead and just be daring? We dare to have the boldness, the courage, and the confidence of free access. I love what the Amplified Bible says, an unreserved approach to God. A woman that was waiting on me in a store one time, her and I got to talking and I found out she was a Christian and I just asked her some questions. You know, I think sometimes even in the conversations we have with people and the questions we ask people, we don't even know what we're being led by the Spirit. Because the questions that I asked her led into her telling me something that I was then able to help her with that I believe may have been life-changing for her. So I was asking her about the store. I said, do you guys work on commission? She said, no, we don't work on commission. We're salaried. But she said, we do have quotas that we have to meet. And if you don't meet the quotas, then you can lose your job. And uh, so she said, you know, when... When we don't have many customers, it can get really tough. And I said, well, do you pray and ask God to send you customers? Do you pray and ask God to give you favor with the people that are in the store so even though they don't understand why, they would really prefer that you wait on them rather than somebody else? And that woman looked at me like a deer looking at headlights. I mean, and she had been a Christian for 30-some-odd-plus years, but she was not part of a church 
that taught her to be bold and aggressive in her faith. So she looked at me and she said, well, would it be okay to ask God for something like that? I said, you can ask God for anything you want. The worst thing that can happen is you won't get it. <laughs> Amen? Now see, if I needed customers to meet my quota because of what I've been taught, it would never occur to me not to ask God to give me favor and send them to me. Why should I stand around and let some unbeliever have them when I'm believing God? Get them over here to me, God. Make me look good. Are you with me? But see, we're not going to do that if we look at ourselves and think because of our mistakes, we dare not expect God to do those kinds of things for us. Are you with me tonight? Are you getting anything out of this? A little bit. No, 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 hold on. Okay. Now, I mean, listen, I know that I know that I know what faith can do. Because I can tell you, and I mean this sincerely, it's not like a put down. I am so not qualified to do what I'm doing. I mean, I just am not. And I had a lot of people that were very happy to tell me that. <laughs> but the whole thing is, is whatever you're not, God is. And I love in the book of Joshua, when God called Joshua to take Moses' place, which that must have been scary. He said to him, I will be with you as I was with Moses. He didn't say, go be like Moses. He said, I will be with you as I was with Moses. Moses had weaknesses that God filled up. Joshua had weaknesses that God filled up. I, I'm, I was the least likely person for God to ask to do this, but somewhere, somehow, God gave me that gift of faith to just, I, I couldn't even tell you why I believed it, but I just believed it and I couldn't let it go. And so here we are today. Amen? From 25 people in my living room floor for five years to having the privilege of doing what I'm doing today. I want to encourage you to stop doubting yourself because God doesn't do great things for you because you're great. He does them because he's great. And it shows his greatness more when he does them through people that the world would think, really? <laughs> I like people to look and say, well, that has to be God. Because we certainly know you. Come on. What kind of a good testimony would it be for that woman if she had all these customers and people are saying, well, what are you? How does that happen? And then she gets an opportunity to say, well, I pray. You should try it. We hope you enjoyed this teaching. To get more from Joyce, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.